Good afternoon, everyone. From all of us here at Perlo Productions, welcome to creating a successful virtual event. It's been an event at least, I don't know, John, what, a few weeks in the making? At but least. really, at least. Uh, I'm Mike Perlo, president of Perlo Productions, joined by John Cooper, who heads up business development and all kinds of other things here at Perlo Productions. And, you know, we, we joke about it being a few weeks in the making, but really, virtual events has been something that's been coming soon to a theater near you for many years. And certainly, John, some kind of major world event that's happened in the last, I don't know, six months or so has really uh, put the gas, put the pedal to the metal in terms of bringing virtual events to the forefront here really in the United States and really worldwide. Yeah, I know. It's been a really important part very quickly of a lot of different industries. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to put this together for all of you, because there's been a lot of information to learn in a short amount of time. Uh, so we wanted to condense that and provide it for you and give you the best advice we can. And we've also included a lot of the answers to the questions that uh, a lot of our clients have asked us that I'm sure you guys have as well. And that can range from how to get people to your event to how to engage them once they're there and even how to make the most out of your event after it's over. Uh, so that's really just some of the information that we're going to cover and provide for you guys uh, so that you can use it in your event. Of course, the number one question, it all goes back to, well, why a virtual event in the first place? Obvious reasons given the events, John, of, of uh, COVID-19. But really, you know, I, I, I think what we didn't anticipate here at Perlo Productions early on, we were like, are we going to be able to do any video production? And then all of a sudden, hey, it started with virtual graduations, and now it's grown to all kinds of other events. And really, uh, it's amazing where virtual events have come and really, I think, how far they have to go. Yeah, I know. It, it definitely is. And I wanted to show everyone kind of what we've been able to accomplish to get their minds rolling, uh, thinking about what they might be able to do for their event. So we've prepared a sizzle reel of the different things we've done, and uh, we'll put that on now for everyone to see. Caitlin Mattia. This is a quintessential layering piece for everybody, no matter what the weather. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are not one to waste precious time and breath on false modesty. It's my great honor and pleasure to welcome you to the commencement celebration of our school's 48th class of 8th grade students. You want to get so passionate during your graduation speech that you throw it up in the air. Philip. Bartholomew Moore. Congratulations, graduates. Can't wait to see the amazing change you are going to bring to our world. Again, just a little look at some of the virtual events we've produced here at Perlo Productions over the last few months, the virtual graduations, virtual fundraisers, company events, uh, we are now exploring larger multi-day conferences with clients, uh, other kinds of virtual uh, celebrations as well, virtual product launches. So one of the questions we have for all of you is, why haven't you created a virtual event? Or is it something you've explored and either just been too, too scared of what it's going to involve or just overwhelmed by the, by the thought of even trying to take your event virtual? Um, or have you begun that process and you really are like, okay, where do we start? What's the most important parts? Uh, is this just gonna be another Zoom? I will say to you that we joked about having, maybe John, we should have had a little Zoom counter on the screen. We're gonna try <laughs> to use that word as infrequently as possible today, because our goal, while Zoom is a nice component of virtual events, our focus is around how to make them really great and a great experience, not just for your company organization, but also for the viewer, the people that are watching and attending your virtual event. So, uh, so I think you know one of the places to start is obviously there's many advantages of a virtual event, John. And let's let's you know let's talk about some of those and 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 some of the things that people may know and some things maybe they didn't even think of as great reasons to have a virtual event and some of the things that virtual events can do in some cases maybe that even an in-person event wouldn't accomplish. 
Yeah, there's definitely a, a lot of advantages to uh, your virtual events. You know, one being you get a larger potential audience, one being a lower cost to attend, uh, more control of content presentations, and uh, greater potential return on investment for your sponsors. Um, so we'll go into a couple of those different things. Um, uh, to start off, virtual events are more scalable. You're able to have infinite people there. Unlike in an in-person event where you're limited by the size of your venue, you could have a million people in your virtual event if you promote it right. Um, and other than that, you can also have a full video recording of the event to share with people who are unable to attend. Uh, so obviously, some, there's a lot of people right now that were not able to attend this event that still want the information. We're going to be able to record the entire thing and share it to them directly so they don't miss out on anything. Um, the, uh, another advantage of it is there is a lower cost to attend. I mean, let's be honest, we've all been to events where we were just like, oh, I don't want to drive all the way out there. Or, I don't want to take the time to go. Uh, this allows people to just get out of bed, uh, put on some pajamas, uh, watch the event from their, from their living room, and not have to worry about any of those extra costs to attending. Um, and so that, that's really convenient for people. Um, and John, John one, yes, thing, yes, one thing to touch on there is, you know, mm -hmm. you talk about the larger potential audience. I think one thing even with us here at Perlo Productions, when we plan this event, when you take your event virtual, all of a sudden you are not limited by geography at mm -hmm. all. Yep. You literally can open your event up to the world. Anybody that can go online and watch your event. So thinking about if you have a product, a service, an offering that theoretically could service people anywhere, you're no longer limited by geography of people that even at the best of times couldn't be flying from Australia to Philadelphia to attend your event. So, you know, so really think big. I mean, really think big when you plan your virtual event of that potential audience you could be reaching out to. I know just looking at the list of registered attendees for our event today, John, beyond obviously lots of people around the United States, we have people in Canada and Mexico and the UK, I believe a few other countries as well. So we have actually brought a bit of an international audience to this event, and, and I hope that speaks volumes to people out there when they think about their event to not, to not limit themselves geographically. Yeah, and if there's, I know we have a ton of people in here from the greater Philadelphia area, um, but if you're from outside that area, please let us know in the chat because we'd love to know uh, how far our audience is reaching right now. And I'm sure our audience would like to see as well. Um, but thanks for adding that, Mike. Um, uh, moving on with a couple other advantages uh, is that one, you get to have a direct call to action that you might not be able to have in person. For example, like if we were fundraising, I could have a giant link popping above my head right now saying go to this link and, and donate and get people to donate right there. Anything that makes it easier uh, is always good. And so you're able to have that when you do it virtually. Uh, you can also have a, a potentially easier access to, to get guests. So if you want to bring on a speaker, you want to bring on maybe a, a government representative or an entertainer, you can bring them on and they are, it's easier for them to go. Obviously we couldn't have someone from California fly out here for this event, but we could potentially have them just zoom in and, and, and have it just as easy as we talk to them every day over the phone. Um, so that is one big advantage. Don't be afraid to reach out to people who you think you might be able to get because you never know if they'll say yes. Uh, then uh, moving on, you also have the ability to pre-produce segments and integrate more creativity with video, animation, photos, etc. I mean, obviously you can play a slideshow uh, during an during, uh, in-person event, uh, but with a virtual event, it's, it can be fully uh, part of the experience, fully pre-recorded uh, and fully pre-produced. And so that's one uh, extra addition. Uh, you also get much more control of the event flow. You know, you don't have, you don't, we don't have to worry about anyone running up on stage. Uh, we don't have to worry about getting security. Uh, we, we can just speak and have the event I wasn't going to tell you what we had planned, John. John, you're oh, ruining the surprise. Oh, well, we had uh -oh. it planned. Somebody was going to run and put a pie in your face. But, oh, oh, well, oh okay, no. Well, you still surprise. could have surprised me. It still <laughs> was a um, uh, we should, I'm going to keep that note for next event we have to do that Look to you. Look over your shoulder. <laughs> um, so you will also and finally get a better sponsorship opportunity uh, for your event because sponsors are going to be able to do the same thing you are uh, with putting their putting their call to action right there in the event and so they're going to be able to get a little bit of a higher return on their investment hopefully get more traffic to their website uh, so that is definitely some key advantages uh, to going into a virtual event as opposed to an in-person event John, um, but let's, let's, let's touch on that on that for a minute with the, of course. the traffic to sponsor websites so mm -hmm. when you think about it like people today are watching here on our Perlo Productions website right and so if you are watching and imagine we had sponsors, we could have sponsor logos right around the video window that you're watching right now, where the whole time you're watching the live event, you are seeing those sponsor names, which could be clickable as well, 
right in front of you. Whereas if you go to a regular event in person, you walk by the signage, you walk by the logos, you see them, you probably don't think a whole lot about them, and you move on, right? So really, again, using the virtual environment, you can really put your sponsors and supporters front and center for the entire event. And so it really brings p huge potential ROI for those sponsors. And even when you're selling and pitching to sponsors, explaining that to them and saying, listen, your logo, your company name as a, as a sponsor will be right in front of everybody watching this the entire time. And that, that just has really, really huge potential. I wanted to say hi to Nancy from Chicago. I saw her in the chat there. So hello, Nancy. Uh, keep, keep it coming with where you guys are from. I saw Sonia said she's had uh, People's Fridays Missouri attend her webinar. So um, hello to everyone joining us uh, who are continuing to trickle in as we start this. And again, we hope you'll chime in sharing you know, any questions you have about virtual events, either that you're planning or that you've experienced or you know, questions you have just about how can I do this? What's the best way to do this? Uh, and, and we will, like I said, try to address many of those questions. So obviously with all the good things that John talked about, there's also obviously you know, many concerns and, and things that, uh, that people, I'm sure many of you are worried about. And so we wanna, we wanna touch on those, John. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, you have, I mean, we have our four points there. Of how do you donate? Uh, can you do outdoor events? Can you have a two-way conversation during a virtual event? And, and really, in general, uh, people, I think, are concerned that they can't get that magic of an in-person event uh, with a virtual event. So uh, I'd love for you, Mike, to kind of alleviate some of those concerns for our audience and, and, and kind of address some of them. How to donate, some ways that you can have your attendees donate. Uh, outdoor events, how can we stream events outdoors when we're far away from a hardline ethernet connection? A two-way conversation that you as a presenter or host can have with members of your audience. And again, how do you recreate the magic of the in-person event? So let's, let's talk about some of those. So for example, with a virtual awards dinner, how can we see and hear from the recipient? Uh, so there are a variety of different ways. We can bring them on remotely, as you'll actually see a little bit later in the show. We're going to bring a few uh, viewer, viewers on with some questions about virtual events. Uh, so there are ways to bring them on remotely where you can see and hear from them. Obviously, using a Zoom-type platform, you can bring those people in and spotlight them as well. For a virtual press conference, uh, one of the questions is, can this be done from an outdoor location? What about internet signal? Well, that's a key thing to address early on when you're considering your venue is, how close are you to a hardline ethernet connection? Is it a strong speed? And if not, does your virtual event company have resources to, to take care of that in case there is not a, a strong internet connection available? A virtual job fair, having that two-way conversation with somebody you're speaking with or interviewing, again, many options for for having that conversation where you can see them, they can see you and you can hear and see each other to have a true one-on-one -on -one conversation. And uh, so, so, you know, just a few of the things, um, uh, even with the virtual, left one out, the virtual product introductions. How can we have several people doing this from, from different locations? Again, we can bring on people remotely from different locations on video, you can hear them, you can see them and bring them into a, a conversation among, among many people. Um, so, so just a, a few of the questions and concerns I think people have. If you have other concerns and questions, please share them with us. We're happy. We have one here um, from Hala. says um, they own a company. They'd like to incorporate technology into their wedding next year for their family and friends who cannot join in person. Uh, what are your thoughts on making a personal event fun and unique while paying tribute to what we do professionally? So sounds to me like... You wanna have a wedding, but you also wanna integrate your company into the event. So, well, first of all, using, again, not knowing specifically what your company's technology is, but find some ways to truly integrate that technology into your event. Um, I'd have to have a conversation to know exactly what your technology is, but whether it's uh, using the items as part of the virtual event live stream, or even having imagery that's part of it, the graphics and branding for the event could have that theme of the technology of your company, maybe intertwined with something connected to the bride and the groom. Uh, so, so different ways to do that. And again, I think part of it, what, what you're bringing up, uh, is, and I think is a great question, is let's think early about some really cool, fun things we can do to make this event unique. 
not just another, you know, eventually we're going to go from saying not just another Zoom to not just another virtual event. So just like, you know, if you were planning a party at your house, what's going to make it unique and special? Same thing here with a virtual event. What can we do to make it unique and special? So, so thank you for that question. Happy to have a more personal conversation and learn more from you about, you know, what your company does and how we could maybe integrate that kind of theme uh, into a, uh, a more interesting wedding theme as well. That's, that's cool to kind of combine your business and, and a wedding. So and what do you we think about that idea, John? Yeah, as we said earlier, I think that's a great idea. You can host it on your website, as we mentioned earlier. You can host the wedding on whatever your company website is. They're right there. You can build a web page, you know, so, so the surrounding images uh, around what, you know, obviously you're seeing us on the screen right now, but the surrounding web page, uh, all that could kind of be branded content or, or explaining what, your, what, what the technology is. Uh, as you said, obviously, we'd have to know what it is specifically to give you specific examples. But we're going to get to later more, more examples of just how to make your event unique and fun uh, so, so that you, know, we, you can kind of get your brain spinning on them. Um, but Mike, I believe we have a guest question coming up now. Yeah, so en enough from us for the first 19 minutes. We, we, <laughs> we opened it up to some people that wanted to ask some questions. So uh, we're going we're to be joined by our first guest caller questioner here. I'm going to bring him up in a second. I, I promise you our, 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 our caller is uh, Mark Snyderman, who's going to be joining us momentarily. There he is. Hey, Mark, how are you? Mark, we can't hear you, bud. So this is one of the things that does happen during a live event. Sometimes, despite the best efforts to prepare and check out audio and video. Mark, you there? Okay, well, we'll here. see if we can get his audio in. We got him now, me? Mark, we got you? I'm here. So this, I'm going to teach you another lesson that I learned from the great Gary V. When things go crazy live, there are two options. Freak out and say, what's going on? Or roll with it and have some fun with it. And I will tell you that... This is something I see Gary do all the time, which is when something goes crazy, he just says, you know what, we're going to fix it. In the meantime, we have plenty to talk about. And so again, finding ways, so we're trying to find ways to integrate live questions, right? So sometimes, despite your best efforts, maybe somebody have issues on their side. Sometimes the audio that you think was great isn't there. But again, finding ways to get people involved in your event, even if you're not seeing all of them on camera, giving them an opportunity to, to participate either through a chat either through asking questions on video, through submitting comments, uh, a variety of different ways. And uh, Celia, are we doing, do we have any luck with uh, Mark? We're good, we got Mark? Mark, you there? I'm here. Can you hear me, Mike? Okay, I'm not hearing Mark, but, uh, but Mark, why don't you go ahead and ask your question? Well, the question I had was, what do you think is more important uh, when you're planning an event, the technical side or the creative side? Okay. Okay, Mark, I, for some reason I can't hear your question, but I know I understand what your question is, was uh, what's more important, technical or the creative? Uh, so I think, and John, you can help me answer this too, I think both are important, okay? So technically, <laughs> that's where we're coming out of this little snafu, technically, you want a team that knows how to not only set it up technically and do a good job, but manage the bugs that may pop up during a live event. So the technical part is important, but also thinking about things in advance before production day of things that can sometimes just happen by the nature of live streaming from anywhere. And then creatively, obviously, doing more than just shooting video, plopping it together and saying, here's our live event. Really coming up with creative ways to use graphics, animation, creating original content, creating in interesting transitions and other effects. Um, all those different things that will, will help uh, bring an event to a, to a higher caliber and, and make your event look better. So make it look good technically, make it look good creatively so people can watch it, can hear it, and want to watch it and want to watch it from start to finish. And I, I, Mark, I hope, uh, apologize, I for some reason can't hear you speaking, but I hope we answered your question effectively and, uh, and, and gave you some things to think about about your future virtual events. So Mark uh, Snyderman, thanks for joining us today and I appreciate your time. Uh, John, so, uh, you know, uh, what, what, what's your take on that, John, in terms of the mix between the importance of technical and creative? Yeah, I think they're obviously both important. I think the best way to think about it is your technical side is your floor. You know, that, that, is, that is where it can drop neat. You need solid floor, solid foundation 
to build on top of. And then the creative side is your ceiling. That's how high the building's gonna go. You know, you can have the most technically perfect, uh, nothing, no problems, but if it was just me sitting here not talking, you'd be bored, <laughs> you know? So you need to get creative uh, to make it more engaging. So that, that technical side, you build that solid foundation and then use the creative side to make it as fun and extravagant as possible. Um, so, so that's really my thoughts on it, Mike. Okay, so let's let's talk through some of the things that they kind of like the the need to knows, John. When people are starting to plan a virtual event, some of the things that they they either information they need to collect or just things to kind of think about as they uh, begin exploring a virtual event. So I, I know the first thing that like we'll, we'll talk to one of our clients about uh, because oftentimes these virtual events right now, uh, they're from a canceled in-person event. So we wanna know all of the details of that in-person event because we wanna be able to take them and put everything that was gonna be in that event into the virtual world. Now, not everything can be perfectly the same, uh, but we, as long as you get creative, you'd be surprised with how much from an in-person event you can take online. Uh, so kind of following up with that, you also need to keep your goals in mind the entire time. You know, every event is different with different goals. Our goal right now is to give you guys information. So it's gonna be a lot of us talking, a lot of answering questions, um, but that wouldn't work if your goal was to entertain your audience, you know? You're gonna to wanna to be bringing in different people to entertain, to talk, uh, to do that, some more flashy graphics and all that. Or if your goal is to fundraise, you know, you wanna keep that in mind the whole time, build your graphics and everything to help you fundraise, uh, bring in guests that'll help you fundraise. Uh, just keep that goal in mind the entire time. Um, you're also going to keep in mind the number of speakers and presenters. That's just something to get to know so you can start to develop how long is this going to be? You know, who do I need to contact? Keep that in mind when you're starting to plan your event. Um, another thing you're going to need to know is how comfortable you, your guests, your audience, wh whoever's going to be involved in the actual process, uh, how comfortable they are with on location versus remote recording. You know, some people don't want, I mean, we, I'm sitting right here in a room uh, with a cameraman right in front of me right now. Some people aren't gonna be comfortable with that and you're gonna just need to do it over Zoom or some other, other software. So make sure to contact everyone who's gonna be involved and make sure they're comfortable and feel safe with whatever you're doing. Um, uh, and then the importance, uh, you need to know the importance uh, that your audience is going to play in their interaction with you, um, whether you're going to need to talk with them directly or not. Right now, we're good with people just asking us questions over text, but with some events, you might need them physically on screen like we had with Mark. Um, so you're going to need to know that going in. Um, you're also going to want to know uh, what your visuals are going to be. Make sure they're all, you know, if you're, you're a company, you want them all branded, make sure they're all kind of visually cohesive uh, so it doesn't look like you just threw a couple of different fonts up on the screen. Uh, make sure to plan that out uh, with that graphic design uh, mindset. Um, another, another thing to think about is the uh, need for a QA. and a um, so make sure to have an active chat. Uh, really, there's rarely a reason to not have uh, the ability for the audience to interact with you. I know uh, <laughs> you guys have been interacting with us and I really appreciate it. Um, uh, and then the uh, last couple things you're going to need to know, one is your budget. Um, you know, what, what do you have to spend on this? Uh, that's kind of a thing you need to know for everything in life, but it's really important for virtual events because you don't want to think too big or too small. You want to know exactly where you're going to come in. Um, you're going to need to know your audience size because a lot of different software and applications uh, limit you on your audience size and you have to plan for that ahead of time. So you need to know the anticipated audience. Um, and, you know, obviously you can change that, but it's a good thing to keep in mind. And the last thing you're going to want to think about is how much of it you're going to want to do truly live. Um, as you've seen, there, there are some issues sometimes with uh, doing things live and you have to learn to roll with them, but you don't have to have those. Uh, you could have all or parts of your virtual event be pre-recorded. Uh, I know that we've worked with clients where their entire event was pre-recorded. Everyone thought it was live, um, but we just went and recorded everything ahead of time and then streamed it live to still have that must-see TV feel, that event, that community uh, to it. Um, yeah, so John, that is, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, John, let's, let's touch a little bit about that because sometimes yeah. I think people aren't clear on what we mean about, you know, live versus recorded versus, you know, shooting on location. So I think a few, a few of the different approaches we've taken to virtual events is in some cases coming to your location and recording professionally all of the presentations, performances, et cetera, and then editing it all together into a beautifully produced virtual event production. Uh, sometimes, either because of geography or COVID or other reasons, people either can't come to that location for the shoot or the client in general has just said, you know what, we'd rather capture everything remotely. So in that case, we do record all those segments remotely. We did that actually with the 
a lot of our virtual graduations, less so now, but we can bring that content in, record you one, one person at a time through the Zoom platform, and then add graphics, animation, et cetera, to make it look really nice. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I would say, you know, we had a conversation with a client today about their virtual event coming up in October, and they were leaning towards capturing most of it remotely. And we, we said, you know what? If it works for your team and everybody can be at that location, let's capture your key presentations on camera with our lights, with our professional setup, so everything really looks its best. And uh, mm -hmm. I think more and more, you know, we're finding ways to be safe, keep socially distant, you know, wear masks when we're on location at a shoot. And, and I would say that more and more, the virtual events we're creating and we're encouraging our clients to think about in, involve capturing as much content as we can professionally uh, for any kind of pre-produced event. And if it's live, the same kind of thing. We do still have options where we can uh, show it remotely through mobile devices and all that, but really setting up like we have here, professional cameras to capture a live event presentation for your virtual event. So either way, there, you know, there's different options and it doesn't have to be one or the other. Did I make sense there, John? Yeah, it made perfect sense. Uh, it made a lot of sense. I actually want to jump over to the chat because I see a lot of good questions coming in. Um, yeah, one from, uh, uh, from who is it, uh, Sonia, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Sonia, um, she said, uh, I've been using Zoom for all of our webinars, how do I create an event like this uh, on my website or via YouTube? And uh, it, it involves a little bit more you know, uh, planning and a little bit more um, production, um, but it's something we'd, be, uh, we'd love to talk to you about. Mike, do you have any uh, more specific answer to her? Because I know that you're the one who set this all up. In terms of the platforms to use, um, yes. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of different platforms, and I think it does depend. That's more of a technical question. I don't want to get too down mm -hmm. in, in the, in, in the uh, you know, details about that. But I think that is a conversation worth having. What platform is best for our event, both technically and in terms of the structure of what we're doing? Sometimes Zoom is fine. Uh, but then taking it to another level and using a professional live stream platform can have its benefits as well. Uh, remember, Zoom was not created to be used for many of the things it's being used for today. So sometimes these events are putting a lot of stress on Zoom's uh, capabilities in terms of bandwidth. And I think sometimes that's problems running into. I think some schools are even running into that now because a lot of schools are using Zoom for their educational uh, purposes. I look mm -hmm. at a couple other questions here from, uh, from, Tom, from let's see, Fagan. I did, all pre uh, I did an all pre-recorded award event, presenters and honorees sent in videos, then we edited and added photos and graphics. Great, well, Fagan, I'd be curious to know, how did they come out? Were you happy with the completed production? Tom, um, if you promote what will be covered, um, let's see here. Uh, I know Edward, uh, Ed's, <laughs> Ed, <laughs> sorry, hi, Ed. Yeah. Um, he asked uh, if he thinks that hybrid events are the way things are gonna go in the future, and I think yes. You know, I think that all events from now on are gonna have some sort of virtual element. Uh, even if it's just like a, a GoPro you set up to live stream it, people are going to expect to be able to, as I mentioned before, not want to travel all the way, you know, to, to here or there. You know, I, I think every wedding you see from now on is going to be live streamed for sure to, to right. make sure everyone around the world can get there. So right. that it's definitely something that we're going to be practicing now um, right. that, you know, if, if your company does events a lot, this, this is the perfect opportunity to practice because it will be the way of the future. And, and sadly, you know, funerals has been another one that we just uh, live streamed another funeral the other day. Uh, you know, the, the sad part is obviously when they're happening, but the fact that even without COVID, you know, think about it, whenever somebody passes away, particularly if it's suddenly, sometimes many friends and family can't be on location for the funeral. So now the capability to live stream a funeral to anyone anywhere has such tremendous potential for family uh, you know, at, at such a difficult time. And so I think, you know, the virtual funerals, the live stream of funerals is something that more and more people will do and funeral homes will offer because it really does open up, you know, such an important moment to so many more people uh, that, that, wanted to, that wanted to be there but, but couldn't for one reason or another. Um, Colleen asked what, uh, what video conferencing system we use. So video conferencing is really not a system we use for our virtual events. Um, but we can certainly have a conversation about that if you need a video conferencing component to events you're doing. Uh, Kyle asked, what do, you, what do you think the future will look like with live events? I feel like we'll eventually end up with smaller live audiences compared to pre-COVID with a larger group live streaming online. So, you know, I, I left my crystal ball at home, but here's what I will say. When we get to the point where COVID is somewhat in the rear view mirror and we are in our newer normal, uh, I think that 
virtual event that events will always that most events will have a virtual component moving forward whether it's a hundred person event or a five or ten thousand person conference because i think a few reasons first of all um if another virus or anything else were to happen, weather, whatever it is that would prevent people from coming to the in-person event, they have this as a backup option. Both the event does and attendees do. Maybe you have a, uh, your child suddenly gets sick a day before you're supposed to go, and so you can't go, whatever it is, something that keeps you from going. And all of a sudden you can say, oh, you know what, it's okay, I'm not gonna be there, I'm not gonna be able to go to the, the after parties, but I'm going to be able to see the content, the speakers, I'm gonna be able to interact with people that are there. And I think some event planners say, yeah, but that's gonna keep, keep people from coming because they know they don't have to go. No, I think many of us are still gonna crave that in-person interaction. And so I think if you can offer both, again, at the end of the day, these events down the road will have a bigger audience between the virtual and the in-person. What else do we have here, John? Elise asked, um, uh, platform, she, uh, more of a comment, platform decisions are imperative as we looked at venues for uh, in-person events uh, platform, yeah, right. So Elise is saying that just like for events in the past, you would look at a venue and how important that venue is. The platform is now your venue, right? So, so thinking about uh, the platform, and honestly, unless you do what we do, that should really be something you trust to your partner that's helping you produce the virtual event, uh, mm -hmm. because it can be very overwhelming. Listen, we've explored lots of it here at Perlo Productions, and I can tell you that sometimes it's not a very clear answer of, you know, it, it's not, we, we want a venue with an outdoor patio, right? When you're talking about live streaming platforms, there's a lot of other factors that can come into, into the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, Fagan added, the videos were done by non-professionals and needed a lot of editing to be usable. They needed professional video. So again, I mean, this is something we talk about all the time, John, which is, you know, quality matters. You know, the, the question earlier from Mark about, about creativity versus technical expertise. Um, shooting videos on your iPhone and all that and slopping them together with iMovie and putting them on a virtual event production. I mean, watch it and if you watch it and say, hmm, if I were just a viewer, I would enjoy this, fine. What you're probably gonna find is it doesn't look any better. If anything, it probably looks worse as part of a virtual event when it's just kind of DIY video. So mm -hmm. remembering that, you know, producing content for your event professionally will make a huge difference and it will make your attendees take your event more seriously. No different than, again, going back to the in-person event. I mean, John, you go to a, an in-person conference or event and things aren't laid out well, or the food is awful, or, or the curtains are falling, or whatever it may be, just the same way you might be unimpressed by a poorly planned in-person event, the same things can happen with a poorly planned virtual event. Exactly. You know, I think we're going to have to uh, email Fagan and, and get him to tell that to every single one of our clients so exactly what he just said. Because that'd be very helpful um, because the importance of that quality is always there. Um, I think we should move on now, uh, though, Mike, kind of continue with what we had planned. And we'll continue to get to questions as we move through. And if we don't get to your question, uh, we'll make sure to uh, look at it and uh, send you an email or give you a call to answer your question as well. Um, right. But anyway, Mike, I'd love for you to tell me a little bit more um, about how you can uh, make events a bit more interactive. Sure, sure. And, and, you know, of course, you know, one of the most valuable currencies in the world of virtual events is that viewer or audience engagement. How do you keep people watching from start to finish? I guess we'll see how well we did at the, at the end of the hour, John. Um, but it's not just the content. There are lots of things you can do to integrate into your virtual event that will, will help with that. So just a few examples, creation of breakout rooms. So if it's a conference or an all day or multi-day event, creating breakout rooms, either where smaller groups can go and discuss a topic, or if you have uh, different presentations, giving people options. If you wanna learn about A, B, or C, go to those individual rooms for the next 30 minutes and then come back to the main virtual room. Uh, integration of, this is one I really like, and we've talked about this with a number of clients, Integration of like entertainers and performers, whether it's a magician, a singer, a comedian, a, some kind of interesting keynote speaker on a subject different than what your main topic of conversation or of that event is. It, it, it's kind of, I would say it gives both you as the host and presenter, but also the audience, something a little different, a bit of a mental break from the main content of the day, something to look forward to. And I would even say to you that if you have somebody as that entertainer performer of note of name recognition, that might even draw people to your event that wouldn't have attended otherwise. So think about that impact as well. Um, and, 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 and think about who might be just a unique 
fit with our event, but something that people would look forward to and say, hey, middle of the day, we're gonna have, we're gonna have this. Um, live and silent auctions. I'm personally I'm like a big fan of auctions, uh, but this is a great fundraising tool. And I don't mean just for nonprofits. Think about this as a business. What greater component it would be for your virtual event if you said, as part of our event today, we are having an auction with all the money going to XYZ charity. And we here at Perlo Productions are happy to be raising money for this charity. So if it's a, a live auction, you can literally bring on remotely or in person a live auctioneer. Uh, attendees can literally raise their hand or raise their hand through the platform to bid. Uh, you could even in advance of the event, uh, mail them some kind of paddle that they can hold up and say, you know, when they want to bid on the item. Uh, and with a silent auction, which is traditionally, you know, table set up with, pick, with the items and a piece of paper where you write your name and your bid, well, it doesn't have to be all that much different, a silent auction for a virtual event. You could create a little video montage to highlight the key high uh, priced items or the, most, uh, the items of most interest and then literally create individual Google, uh, Google link, uh, links to Google pages where people can click on the link, write down their name, see where people have bid. It's a live document. If they see somebody who's already bid higher than they want to bid, then they just move on to the next item. And by the end of your virtual event, you have a list of the bids and who has the, who's made the highest bid and who the winner is. So again, two ways that can be great ways. And by the way, a great way to tie in your sponsors and supporters as well, because they can donate items on behalf of their company. So it gives them a little extra bang for their, for their sponsor buck. Um, ways to support and donate. We talked in this, touched on this a little bit earlier. Encourage folks, and this is something most of you probably know, we did a lot before this event, encouraging people to support, mention, and post about your event on social media. Uh, interesting quick story. One person I know who I reached out to by LinkedIn and messaged her and said, would you be kind enough to do me a huge favor and, and post about our event on LinkedIn? She commented to me the next day that how much she appreciated me doing that because she wouldn't have thought of doing that had I not sent her a little message. So reaching out to people you know, people you know professionally, personally, and asking them to, to mention your event. Um, also, you know, ways to donate can include a hashtag, a link, text to donate at a certain number, uh, have a live graphic on the screen that is actually doing a live total of how much money you've raised during your event. That always gets people to participate and give when they see the number hopefully going up and up and up, or if you have a certain uh, target number. And, um, and even, here's something, we had a conversation with an organization recently. If you've raised money before, this might sound a little sketchy, but here's my idea. Let's say you're trying to raise $100,000 and you've raised 25 grand before the event. So you start off at the beginning of the event maybe saying you've raised a couple hundred dollars, and then in that first 30 minutes, let that counter climb all the way up to that $25,000 you raised before the event to create some momentum at the early part of your event, and then hopefully encourage people to give more and more and more. So just, just a little idea there. Uh, last one I'm gonna to touch on, then I'm gonna to toss it off to John. Uh, something maybe we'll do after our event, John, a little cocktail hour. Um, it's really a great way to start or end an event essentially a virtual cocktail hour. We can do it with something as simple as a Zoom meeting room where you invite everybody in there before or after the event and literally assuming everybody is of age, encourage everybody to show up with their favorite adult beverage, in my case, water in my Star Wars mug, um, and, and mingle and talk. It's, it's a bit of organized chaos, but can really be a lot of fun and a great way to kick off or to end your virtual event, and it does not have to be a virtual wedding or virtual bar mitzvah or whatever, and even a corporate event. Think of all the great uh, meet and greet cocktail events that many cor uh, conferences, trade shows, and events have. Well, you can create your own virtual version uh, through everything you do as part of your larger uh, virtual event experience. Uh, mm -hmm. John, uh, what do you think? Should we have a virtual cocktail hour after our event? Mike, I'm going to have a cocktail hour after this event no matter what, so you're welcome to join me. Um, uh, yes, I, I actually just noticed in the chat before I start, uh, I saw that uh, it looks like Kyle answered Sonia's question. I totally encourage everyone to do that. If you guys have your own answers to the questions you're seeing, please share them because, I mean, I, I consider us experts, but we don't know everything. Um, so, so feel free to help each other out. And, and Sonia's question uh, was that she was planning on having an open house and how to make that sort of thing more interactive for, for, for the people coming. And I know that uh, that uh, Kyle said something about 360 video. Uh, there's totally uh, hardware and software you can use to completely virtually map out a space and literally take it through a guided tour. Like if you ever use like Google Street View where you can go house to house, do that within a space. Um, so there's totally ways to do that. And you can have a live person guiding the tour. So that, that's just one idea. Um, but kind of 
moving on to what, what we've prepared for you guys, uh, the next uh, great way to get people to interact is to play a game. Um, as silly as that might sound, um, people love games. <laughs> you know, uh, pretend you're back in, a, in an elementary school classroom and the teacher's got some time to kill. Uh, what, what can you do uh, with your audience? You know, you could play, you could play easy games like, you know, a 20 questions or a, or a, um, a Pictionary, you know, have people draw on the screen with their mouse and have to everyone shout out and guess what it is. Um, or you could play some more uh, involved things. Like I know I've, I've been on Zoom, Zoom calls where we've played Jackbox party games, um, uh, which if you haven't uh, looked at yet, uh, get it and play it with your friends because it's a ton of fun. Um, but um, there's different things like that that you can do uh, to engage your audience and you, know, you could have them go into breakout rooms, create teams, or just have the breakout rooms be small games themselves. Um, definitely incorporate that into your event uh, if you're looking for something to have your audience actually do and participate. Um, uh, the, the next thing you can do is to send both real and digital swag bags uh, to, to your audience. You know, send them a bag with some of those branded products that you haven't been able to give out this year because you haven't gone to any trade shows. Um, or send, it, send them a t-shirt um, or, or send them a, you know, really anything that you can think of that they might enjoy, you can send to them physically through the mail and then have them open it there for the event. Um, you can do the same thing with virtual items, you know, videos, pictures, uh, coupons. This is a great way to bring in your sponsors and give them uh, virtual offers. Uh, send that send that to them in an email before the event. Have it op have them open it up and be you know part of your event. Uh, you, you can do uh, both of those things. Uh, another fun thing you can do, especially uh, with Parallel Productions, is integration of augmented reality. Uh, if you don't know what augmented reality is, uh, give me a call. I'll talk your off your ear off about it for hours. Um, but essentially, it's putting the virtual world into the real world. Uh, so something we'll do is we'll create a target image, uh, put it on a postcard and send it to people. And then once they get that postcard, it'll tell them to download an app on their phone and they can use that point at the postcard. And you could have a virtual hologram of yourself talking to them uh, during the event. So you can tell everyone to point their phones at the same time and have a holographic speaker um, in the real world for your virtual event. Um, so that would be a really cool thing that will get people psyched and engaged. And trust me, they'll tell all of their friends about it. Um, and then- John, let's uh, get to my favorite part. Come on, come oh, on, my yes, favorite part. Yes, yes. Uh, th this is the part that everyone loves. Uh, <laughs> Coordinate some food delivery, uh, just like with the swag bags. Uh, if it's a local event, uh, you can have a you know a local food place sponsor it and send out you know some pizza or some sandwiches uh, to each of the attendees. If it's a if it's a larger event, don't be afraid to ask you know some some national chains to. Uh, if they could sponsor the event and send out some food, uh, send out food items, drink items too. I, I know that uh, wine is a big thing, some wine tasting events uh, that I've seen go around. So send a bottle of wine to everyone, have them sit there, sip the wine while you talk. People love getting food and drink. I don't have to tell you that. Um, so make sure to try and integrate that into your event uh, if that's something that you want to that you want to have part of it. Okay, great. Um, so John, uh, lots of lots of really great ideas there. And while we've taken a lot of great comments and questions from people through the chat, we do have another uh, attendee guest caller with a, a question for us. Uh, we're going to go to now, and we're joined Hi. by Ashley Owens. Ashley, hopefully I can uh, hear you here. I appreciate you joining us here, and want to uh, have a chance to hear your question and and what you wanted to ask us with regard to virtual events that you've looked into. Sure, what is the best way to maximize connecting with other attendees at a virtual event? Uh, so, so I think one of the things that, uh, you know, some of the things we've already talked about about ways to integrate people in your event, but I think also giving people ways to connect with people on social media, giving ways like you're seeing here, I see people helping each other out on the, on the chat within the event. So creating a chat where people can go back and forth, even adding video chat elements to your virtual event, um, giving people ways where they can share contact information, exchange contact information, um, you know, I, I, and I think recognizing as part of your event that it's not all about you, that it's about your attendees and realizing that they've not only come to watch your event and learn what you have to present, but also about connecting with other professionals uh, or other people that might, that might be worth them networking with and giving them that opportunity to. So finding different ways. Frankly, that's probably something we could think about, John, in the future is other ways to get 
our attendees to interact more within our event. Although, honestly, I think the chat room is doing a pretty, a pretty darn good job of, uh, of doing that because people are helping each other out, people are answering each other's questions. And uh, uh, so, anyhow, Ashley, I appreciate your time. Thank you for contributing your question and your time here. And I hope we've helped answer some of your questions on virtual events. Yeah, Thank just you. one little extra thing there, Mike, another great way to uh, spur interactivity between your audience members uh, is to have a little mole in the chat room, you know, <laughs> have someone <laughs> on, on your payroll, you know, put, putting some things in there, asking questions, you know, getting people to interact with each other. Because as you've seen here, once the people start interacting with each other, it just snowballs and they get used to it and it continues. It's getting over that, that first little speed bump uh, that causes some people problems. But, you know, just have someone there to, you know, spur on activity when it gets, when it gets a little quiet in there. Right. I want to touch on one other comment, and then, uh, John, we're going to get on to ROI. Uh, Kyle said, asked if we offer a service that would uh, do live transcription for people that are hard of hearing. Um, that certainly is something uh, that can be offered on live streaming services, uh, can also be added uh, to the recorded version. So there are different options for that. And that's something more and more that's important to keep in mind is people that want to attend and, and might need closed captioning. And that is something we've certainly discussed. Uh, one other thing here. Uh, uh, B. Fox said that a convention, a society convention featured a member giving a cooking lesson in his kitchen, uh, altering with playing selections on his instrument. Wow, that's pretty cool. I like mm -hmm. that. Uh, a little bit of food, a little bit of music. Sounds, sounds like an awesome event. Okay, um, we're running a little bit over, but we're going to try to get this thing moving along. Bottom line, whether you spend hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, whatever you spend on your virtual event, you need to see return on that virtual event investment. So John, let's touch on a few of the highlights of, of ways that, that people can, uh, can increase that, their return on their virtual event investment. That's a mouthful. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I know we've alluded to this a couple times already, but make sure to reach out for sponsorships. Uh, you can always sell sponsorships to a virtual event, just like an in-person event. And as we already mentioned, they can be even more valuable to those sponsors. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask. Um, another, another great thing, as we mentioned earlier, having a direct call to action. If you're, for example, fundraising and that's the point of your event, don't go through the whole event without every couple minutes putting a graphic on screen, reminding people to, to, to donate, uh, you know, have that counter that we talked about before with the numbers increasing so people see that and want to be a part of it. You know, keep that goal in mind and have a direct call to action that regularly pops up to remind people to do what you brought them there to hopefully that they would do. Um, uh, the, uh, um, the other thing to do is depending on what your event is, you could sell tickets. I mean, obviously we didn't want to sell tickets to this because the point of this is to give you guys information and we don't want to charge I, for information. I, John, I actually heard that late today, tickets were selling on eBay for thousands of people. Oh, really? We had yes. some scalpers, yes. Yes. some virtual yes. scalpers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, so, you know, we, we, we had to call the police and they took care of it and everything's okay. okay. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, don't, don't be afraid to think about that because if you're bringing on, if you're bringing on some important guests, some, some key speakers or entertainers that you know are going to want to make people come to your event, they'd be willing to pay for it. Um, you know, don't be afraid to put that ticket price out there. Also, when you put when they, even if they pay a little bit, um, it makes them much more likely to actually attend. Um, so having a small ticket price might actually boost your attendance. Um, uh, another uh, great idea is um, fee-based speaking opportunities. You know, there's a lot of people um, who will pay money to be able to speak at your event. Uh, if you've ever been to some trade shows, they work that way. Um, but you know, you can always have the people speaking at your event also be paying you for the opportunity to get in front of that audience. Uh, so, so always keep that in mind as well. And uh, finally, make sure to repurpose the content of your event for future use. Uh, that could be taking clips from it uh, and sharing them on social media. You know, if you have a, a nice little clip from a speaker that gets applause, put it out on there, get interaction on your social, more people come in your way. Um, and also, as I said before, record the whole thing and send it out to everyone who wasn't able to be there in person. Uh, and that way they can experience the same thing that everyone else did. Um, so, so those are just some key ways to really get the most out of your event, uh, either during or after it's over. Right. John, Rachel chimed in saying that they're having a virtual event in November and they've incorporated fundraising and have been successful so far. So Rachel, first of all, congratulations. That's awesome to hear. Uh, one thing I will mention is a lot of these events are very uh, fundraising heavy before the event, whether it's through sponsors or just direct asks. But don't forget that your event itself is a huge, huge, huge opportunity to fundraise. And you can do it 
appropriately. You can do it without being over the top with asking people to give. But remember that that actual event you create, hopefully a big part of that is inspiring people to want to give, support, donate. Give them creative ways to do that. Give them different options. Give them ways they can click on a link or somewhere on the screen. Again, give them ways they can text. Don't just focus on fundraising before the event. Realize the tremendous opportunity you have to not only fundraise during the event, but also to build more interest in supporting your organization during that event. So, so don't forget that. Um, a shout out from, uh, well, I don't know if this is from uh, Andy from Liberty Lake or somebody from Liberty Lake, <laughs> uh, but he, uh, he said, great job, fellas. He ran virtual events all spring uh, through the software they had. Um, it was a cheap software, he said, no support but it was helpful to him. So yeah, listen, there are ways out there. There is software out there where you can live stream your event yourself. Um, but I would say practice, 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 and make sure you know what you're doing before you go with the actual um, live event. Um, speaking of, of getting success with your event, there is really important effort behind promoting the event. As I'm sure many of you watching us today found out about this event through the endless, and I apologize if we're a little bit over the top, but you know what, that's part of promoting an event. Be over the top, shout it from the rooftops. And we, I think we mostly shouted it through the social media rooftops. And so, so use your social media outlets, use your friends and connections, uh, use email marketing, use any way you promote things about your business or organization to promote this. And then ask those people to help promote it. Uh, create that online listing as we did through Eventbrite, creating a Facebook event, uh, other platforms, create a video of you talking about the event or, um, or even a, an event promo video that gets people excited about attending. As I mentioned, posting it on social media, have a registration link, uh, post it. I know, John, you and I both found various Facebook groups related to events where we mentioned this and got people that we were not connected at all with uh, to, to know about this event. And I think that's something you also found successful uh, when we were doing some of the virtual graduations. Mm -hmm. No, it's definitely a key. You know, I think people are afraid sometimes to promote themselves and what they're doing. Um, but if you're creating an event that is helpful in any way, don't be afraid. You're trying to help people. You know, put it out there. I, I'm sure that you know all of my networking groups I attend every week are sick and tired of hearing about this event, but they heard about it and they knew where it was. And that's the most important thing. The worst thing in the world is to have someone who wanted to attend your event that never even knew about it. Right. And and one other uh, one other idea in terms of promoting your event. Ask centers of influence, either people that are your centers of influence, centers of influence uh, you know, people you know, or chambers of commerce, industry organizations, associations, other well-connected professionals, or whoever it might be, to just help you spread the word in advance about your event, to get the word out to a greater circle of people. All great ways to help promote your event. And so hopefully if you started out maybe thinking, 50, 100, 150 people are going to attend your event that you get to several hundred or thousands or over the years, your audience continues to multiply thanks to those efforts. Um, so, John, I know we want to get to a few other things before we wrap this up in the next few minutes. Uh, we gave you a lot of information in a relatively short period of time. I hope you have a lot to think about. I hope you have a lot of questions. I'm going to take a look to see if there's any other questions, but I know, John, we want to kind of put a little bow on this with some, some key things we hope people remember from, from our presentation today. Yes, I know there's a ton of information here, but if you're going to take anything away from this, uh, here are the four things that we want you to remember. Uh, number plan for success. You know, that is one in the planning. Make sure you plan everything out and practice as I know I saw a couple of people allude to in the chat there, um, but make sure you have everything planned out and anticipate success. You know, this it, you don't have to have the mindset of this isn't going to be as good as the in-person event. No, anticipate that will be as good, if not better. And, and that way you're, you're already shooting for the stars. Um, the number two thing is get creative, be unique. Whatever, that, whatever makes you, you, whatever makes your organization, your organization, integrate all of those things into your event. You know, you want it to be personal, you want it to be fun, uh, and you want to get really creative and try and look for the things that no one else is doing. Um, and of course, <laughs> if you want to talk with us, uh, we can help you find those things. Uh, and number three is to maximize the impact of your event. All of those things I said, increasing the ROI, make sure to do them. Post on social media, ask for sponsors, uh, make sure to, to integrate the fundraising into the event, whatever it is, maximize that ROI. And finally, make it live. 
Uh, you want to have that live experience, that must-see TV. You know, a lot of people have asked us, hey, could we just like create some content and send it out to people to watch their leisure? You can, but you're never gonna have that magic feeling of everyone being in there in the group chat and talking to each other. It makes it so much more memorable and so much more of a thing that they feel like they, they get to take something away from. So make sure to make your virtual event a real event and make it live. Uh, so, yeah, John, John yeah. I just wanna to touch on that real quick because mm -hmm. we've had a lot of conversations about that with people who say, mm -hmm. well, if you're pre-producing, pre-recording the whole event, why are we gonna have you live stream it? We'll just put it online and let people watch it. And again, you know, creating that kind of must-see TV vibe of everybody tunes in and watches it at the same time. Sure, they can pause it, but you can't fast forward the video just like this right now. Hopefully nobody wants to. Um, but seriously, knowing that everybody tunes in so for ours, it was Thursday, four o'clock Eastern time, Perlo Productions event. And everybody knew that was the time. I will tell you the highest compliment to us, John, Sorry for hitting my microphone. Don't do that too when you're doing a live presentation. The highest compliment to us was we had a number of people just late this afternoon who either emailed or texted us saying, you know, hey, we were really, I was really looking forward to attending your event. This came up or that came up. Will we be able to watch it after the fact? And so, yes, you still have that opportunity to watch the full production after the fact, but creating that, that timeliness makes people, honestly, made people bummed that they could not watch the live event, which to me is a compliment to our event, but also speaks to the magic of truly presenting something in a live format. Don't, don't you, do you find the same kind of conversations, Sean? Definitely find the same kind of conversations, and, and I always tell them, you know, make it live. <laughs> the live is so important, and, and if you're gonna walk away with anything, don't forget that, um, right. yes. Um, I know we wanted to co throw out a couple of last kind of thoughts to people, and then we're going to get into our special offer. I hope everybody that was watching earlier is still watching. If you, if you know anybody that was watching and logged off, tell them to come back because we've got a, a special offer coming up here in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of just a, a few questions while, before we get to that offer. I wanted to just ask our audience that, that, that is participating so well in this chat, and I thank you for it. Um, if you are currently planning an event, I would love to hear what you are most excited about. If you have an excited, unique thing, if you have a cool idea um, that you are comfortable sharing with everyone, please share it because I'm sure everyone will be able to get something from it. And also on the flip side of that, if you're playing an event and you're having some sort of trouble, if there's a problem, an obstacle that you can't get around, share it in there and, and let us know and we can kind of discuss uh, how to help, <laughs> help you get around it. Um, but uh, Mike, do you have anything else to say? Do you want to maybe get to the offer while people uh, have their have their responses rolling in? Yeah, and so if you want to share your, your thoughts on those two questions in the chat uh, while I share some information with you. So first of all, as our, as our thanks, first of all, just to anybody out there, if you email us after the event, we are, John and I are more than happy to, we're gonna give you a special calendar link where you can use to schedule a courtesy one hour um, virtual event brainstorming session with John and myself. We will sit down with you in person, virtually, however you prefer, and just brainstorm ideas for your event. This is not required, this is not committing you to working with us on your virtual event. We're just happy to give you some time to kick around ideas, both creatively, technically, or anything else that comes to mind. So I hope many of you will take us up on that. Uh, but more specifically, if you do decide to work with us here at Perlo Productions on a future virtual event, uh, and you were here today, uh, our way of thanking you for joining us for this hour is we are gonna give you a courtesy addition at no cost to your virtual event production. And you can essentially upgrade the look and feel of your event with either an aerial video intro that we will shoot with our drones and put together a really cool aerial video open for your virtual event production, or an animated logo intro where we take your company's logo and create a really cool dynamic effect. That is a real great way to brand your event. Frankly, it's something you can use moving forward in other videos you produce for your company or organization. So bottom line, really easy. Call us, email us, say, Mike, John, you know, loved, hopefully, <laughs> your presentation. We want to talk about a virtual event. And when the time comes, we hopefully get to work together. We will uh, we'll happily give you either the animated logo intro or the aerial video intro um, as ways of us saying thank you to you for, for giving us of your time. Uh, and uh, John, I want to mention one other comment here that I saw online uh, that uh, well, Liberty Laker said, major compliments for all the auto reminders we had in place for this event. It was amazing. So, you know, honestly, my opinion is go overboard a little bit when it comes to promoting your event. Yeah, every once in a while there's going to be somebody that's going to say, oh my goodness, enough emails, enough Facebook messages. But more often than not, people like those reminders. People like you helping them keep your event top of mind, even when you think it's top of everybody's mind. As we say here in our video world, we think video 24-7 
The rest of you don't think video all the time. You're thinking about it when you have a particular project. So help people think about and remember that your event is coming up where, when, how, all those uh, important things. And um, what else do we have, John? I guess just basically a way to reach us, to contact mm -hmm. us. Uh, we wanna share that contact information with you as well as the special calendar link that we have created here. So there you go. So you can uh, continue the conversation with us. Mike at ProLoProductions.com, John at ProLoProductions.com. Reach us by phone at 856-669-1669. Uh, and there is the Calendly link. You can't click on that on the screen, but if you type that into your web browser, it will take you right to a link where you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one free consultation with us about your virtual events. And, uh, and we look forward to hearing from you, talking more about it, hearing your ideas, telling you your ideas are not crazy. In fact, we're gonna show you ways you can make those things maybe even better than they were in the real event. And I think, John, when it all comes down to it, and we found this early on with the virtual graduations, we heard so much negativity around the virtual graduations. And the response after the fact was such the opposite, where we have people now from high schools and colleges saying, Let's do it again next year the same way because we really enjoyed the virtual version. Uh, and I think with these virtual events, they're opening up new possibilities for people that, that they didn't think about. And I, I hope that's part of what we've, we've done today, John, is, is help people think about new and different ways that they can go about their future virtual events or even just thinking about virtual events uh, in general. Who, who would have known, John, six months ago when we were at the Tri-State Camp Conference in Atlantic City that we would be where we are today talking about all these new virtual experiences that are uh, really have become a whole new world for us. Yeah, I think that's the real big takeaway is you will be surprised with how good the reception is um, uh, for your virtual event because, you know, right now people are just craving that sort of that sort of human contact and social interaction. And while you might not be able to have it in person, you can have it virtually and people will end up thanking you for it, assuming you do it well. Um, but um, hopefully you are able to do it well. So Mike, do you have any closing comments uh, before we thank everyone and call it a show? Yeah, I got a couple of final comments here. Kelly said the live is great for answering questions. So Kelly, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Uh, uh, B Fox said, uh, He's uh, I'm not sure if B is a man or a woman, but B is uh, running a virtual button show for the New Jersey State Button Society this Saturday. Their first ever, and most of their attendees are older, are over age 80. So, um, so you know, all jokes aside, so we've done some events with organizations that are targeting an older crowd. And you know what? Whether you're 80 or 8, people don't always get into a virtual event, whether it's entering through Zoom or another live stream platform so easily. So whether it's a dress rehearsal or starting your stream early and saying, hey, come on 15 minutes earlier, make sure you can see us, make sure you can hear us, do those things for everybody because the best of us sometimes have problems. I was on a, a virtual meeting a few weeks ago and for some reason, nobody could hear me. And Mike, we can't hear you our words rarely uttered. So, um, <laughs> so when that was happening, I know, hey, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. So really, you know, whatever the, whatever the, uh, the audience, you know, do all you can to set your event up for success. And part of that is making sure that your audience can hear and see you. And I hope you heard and saw us throughout the last hour or so. Um, John, any final comments before we uh, put a bow on this, uh, this puppy? I mean, really the only comment I have is thank you to everyone who came. Thank you to everyone who shared this with people. Uh, just really from the bottom of my heart, thank you, because we really appreciate uh, the, the response that this received beforehand and everyone participating during the show. I know my greatest fear is always there's going to be no one in that chat box. And you guys did a great job. Uh, so thank you very much for everything you've done. And we'll take our own advice. Please share the link to this event on social media if you enjoyed it with other people you think would be able to watch it, would like to watch it, because it will be available pretty much right after this event. And, uh, and again, reach out to us with comments, questions, whatever you may, it may be. We'll have even probably hang on here on the chat for a few minutes post live stream. So if you have a few more comments you want to chime in with, John and I can uh, sit here for a few minutes and, and answer some of your questions. But thank you all for all of your time. John, fun as always. We'll... Uh, I don't know. We'll do it again, maybe before the end of 2020. We'll see. We'll see. Definitely before the it's, end of 2020. <laughs> it's, it's a process creating a virtual event about a virtual event. So, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we had a lot of fun. Really, this was a lot of fun. I want to thank our whole team behind the scenes who rocked it today. Thank you, everybody, 
for making us, uh, John and I, look as, as, I guess, as good as we can. Um, but thank you all again for putting aside an hour or so of your time this afternoon. We hope we've answered questions, we've opened up new possibilities, and we have you excited for the future, and particularly the future of virtual events. Uh, again, thanks on behalf of myself and John Cooper. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.